Hello, my friends. Steve the Hurricane here, and I'm very excited to begin the webinar. As always, I have my friends on Facebook Live over here. Welcome to the webinar. Type in your questions that you have, because if you have questions, I want to be able to answer your questions as we go through this, but I also want to stick and move. I don't want to take up a lot of your time because this is a two-part webinar, and I know that it's the holiday season, so, you know, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, uh, happy holidays, whatever you celebrate. If you don't celebrate anything, let's make 2020 our best year yet, shall we? Does that sound good, everybody? Is everybody okay with that? Let's make 2020 our best year yet. And uh, there's a lot of content that I'm going to go through in this webinar. So uh, definitely a couple of things before we get started. Number one, have an open mind. I'm going to stick and move, as I said before. I'm going to go through a lot of things with you so that you can get a good understanding of what we have to do to prepare for 2020. Number two, remember that there is a part two of this webinar that will be on, uh, I think, Tuesday, January 7th. Is that correct, Nick? Tuesday, January 7th is the second part. Yes. And so if you're already registered for part one, you will be registered for part two, so you don't have to duplicate that. But if you just found out about this now or you're on Facebook Live, you can click the link and that'll bring you to where you can see the computer and everything I'm going to share with you on the computer because that's a vital part of today's webinar was what I'm sharing with you. And then number three, you know, as part of the this this presentation here, obviously I'm doing this webinar for free for you because I want to give you great information, but I also want to tell you about my boot camp. And you know about the boot camp. I mentioned it at the last webinar I did, and this boot camp is going to be huge. All right, there's almost a hundred people registered and confirmed already for this boot camp, and it's not even 2020 yet. And it is March 18th, 19th, and 20th. It is in Houston, Texas. And so you definitely do not want to miss it, especially with all of the changes to the home care landscape. Especially we're going to talk a little bit today, for those of you who aren't aware, about PDGM, which is the patient-driven grouping model and how Medicare is changing the reimbursement for all of the home health and hospice companies starting in a few weeks, January 1st. We're talking, this is a big deal. How do you prepare for that? One of the best things you can do is to come to this boot camp because it's gonna be all focused around how you can thrive in the new Medicare landscape, even private pay. You have to know what's going on with the Medicare landscape and how you fit in it. That's the entire purpose of this boot camp. Do not miss it. That's the best thing you can do to make sure 2020 is your best year yet. And like I said, there's almost 100 people already registered for the event. 200 is max. So this is going to sell out like no other. Don't wait. Commit and get your tickets and everything for it before it's too late. And here's my thank you for being on this webinar. All right. First, I want to thank my CNA jobs, because they are one of the sponsors of the boot camp officially now. And I also want to thank Veterans Care Coordination because they too are officially one of the sponsors of this boot camp. And when you come to the boot camp, you're going to meet them and they're going to help you get more caregivers and come up with other payer sources to be able to do the funding. And then my nonprofit, the Institute for Dignity and Grace, is also always one of the featured sponsors as we are trying to raise more advocacy and awareness for preparing for something that is going to happen to each and every one of us. I actually spent uh, significant time the week of Thanksgiving speaking to PR people about how to get the word out, and they were all saying how important it is for people to prepare and, and, and know how to navigate the healthcare system, especially with the changes of Medicare through this whole PDGM model, which I'm gonna talk a lot about today. And so my thank you to you for being on this webinar. I'm giving you a $200 discount code. If you use promo code when you go to check out for the bootcamp, HME2000, HME is my company, Hurricane Marketing Enterprises, 200, HME200, all capitals, It'll give you $200 off the ticket. And I'm going to throw in there right now for you. Check this out. The first person who live 
on this webinar, for those that are live, I want to really reward you. If you call my office, 1-848-444-9865. If you call now and you register for the boot camp, the first person who does, I'm going to give you a rapid results kit. This is a $1,000 package. All right, a thousand dollar package. You get the three million dollar blueprint. You get the creation of power partners. You get the art of closing, sales binder. You get a strategy session, and you get to come to the boot camp. Call now. The first person who calls, I'm going to give you a rapid results kit, absolutely free, as my thank you for taking action. You save two hundred dollars, and you get a rapid results anytime during this webinar. You can call in and get that right now. Okay, just throwing that out there to you as my thank you for doing that, all right? So there you go, you have that, and I hear the phone is already ringing, it'll probably be gone soon, but call in, call in, because you never know if somebody purchases it or not because they're calling in, so that you want that to be you. At any given time, you just call this number and get your ticket to the boot camp. all right? Legitimate. So now here's what I'm gonna cover on this webinar today. There's a second part coming up, but this is the first part. What we have to do now, it's all about planning, right? The first thing is, your why, and I'm gonna talk about why that's important because I know every single person on this webinar and on Facebook is in a different situation from one another. You're all in a unique situation. You have to determine why you're doing this for whatever reason. Then we're gonna talk about setting a goal because what is the goal for the year? Based on my why, what is my goal for this year? Then we're gonna talk about making a plan because you gotta create a marketing plan to be able to generate both the referrals and then the caregivers themselves to be able to meet the demand of it. And we're gonna to touch base on that. Once you have a plan, now how much money am I gonna spend in order for me to execute this plan? That's your budget. And then we're gonna talk about strategic partners and that's what I'm gonna go through the PDGM, the whole patient-driven grouping model because if you're not aware of what's happening, forget it. You're not going to be able to accomplish your goals. So you've got to be aware of what's happening. I'm going to give you some references and some things during that section. And then last but not least, obviously come to the boot camp and get trained how to embrace the, the whole Medicare shift and change to be able to meet your referral partners and your power partners or strategic partnerships so that you can both and all thrive together. Private duty, home health, hospice, the three-legged bar stool of home-based providers, that's your strategic partnership. Get trained, all of you together at the boot camp, and we move forward, all right? So first I wanna show you this. As we're talking about the why, and this is why I say we have to start with our why for 2020. This was last week here in my office. This is, you see this photo right here at the bottom left. I'm actually standing right here like this, right? That was right here in this room where we are right now. And these are, some of my mastermind clients. I actually have close to 30 mastermind clients in my mastermind group, which is just high level, getting very, very deep strategic planning. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is because every single person who came into that meeting last week, they all had a, although we're all in the same industry and we're all business owners, they all had a different 2019. There were several people who doubled their revenue in 2019 in the room. There were several, there was two people who actually tripled their revenue in 2019, meaning they did three times more than what they did last year. You know, that's what we do at Hurricane Marketing Enterprises, help people get those kind of results. And then there was a couple of people who went through crisis and they were happy to have done exactly what they did the year before because the chaos that happened in their office, losing uh, key staff members or uh, potential issues with, with caregivers doing things that you can't even begin to think about that creates damage control and PR nightmares and everything else. All these, these are things that, that I'm sure some of you can relate to, and that's why I'm sharing this with you right now. Like you, you, some of us can relate to this. And so that's why I'm sharing is because then after we mastermind for two days, we do work hard, play hard. So we spent two days here in the office working hard, 2020 planning and getting reinvigorated and re-energized. Then we went out for a nice meal. That was the whole group on the bottom right. Uh, we went, I took them out to the New Jersey. You know, if you're in New Jersey, you got to get the Italians. I took them to a great Italian restaurant. And then for those who stuck around for the extra day, 
we went to the escape room and we did the time paradox, which was a 5% success rate. And yes, we super geniuses succeeded <laughs> at that escape room. We escaped with minutes to spare. So anyway, you know, why? What is your why going into this? Is my why, and, and these are things I want you to write this down, like write this down with me as we're, we're going through here, all right? So why? Is my why for 2020 to make income? Is my why in 2020 to grow my revenue to the seven-figure mark or even the eight-figure mark, depending on where your business is? You know, I work with people who are doing $20 million, I work with people who are doing half a million dollars, and everybody in between, and then some. Is my why to take care of more patients in 2020 than I did in 2019? Is my why, these are examples of why, I want to sell this business. I'm tired. I've been doing this for a decade. It hasn't happened yet. And I don't know if I want to do this anymore. That's okay if that's your why. So then how can I, in 2020, make my business as attractive as possible and sell it to the next person who's going to be able to take it and continue the mission for their why? Whatever your why is, this is, and this is important as to why I'm saying this, because 2020 planning, you know, when I start going through the PDGM and I go through the planning and the budget and stuff, I'm talking about making, spending a lot of money. I'm going to talk about getting trained. I'm going to talk about doing things that we currently are not doing to be able to thrive in the 2020s, the next decade, with the changes to Medicare. So there's a lot that I have to learn. And if I don't want to learn that, that's totally fine. So then how can I package my business to get my maximum return on investment for all the years I put into it? That's a great reason. All right. Or again, I want to help more people. Well, how many people, right? Whatever your why is, I need you to write it down. And if you don't know it now, that's fine. Do some soul searching. You know, again, some of my clients in this in this room here, I remember I spoke to some of them at the Houston Mastermind meeting months ago, and, and there was one in particular who just lost his mojo. And I said, you got to reset. You got to find out why you want to do this business because I'll tell you right now, you're not going to have success until you know why you want to do it. And then when I saw him and his wife at the next meeting last week, they were completely rejuvenated, focused, and ready to take on 2020 because they got reinvigorated with why they're doing what they're doing because that's going to drive you through. Because let's be real, folks, this is a tough business. It's a tough business. And I know it's a tough business because I had my own, and now I work with hundreds and thousands of home care owners all around the world. And I, and I hear your stories. I know how hard this is, but I also know how rewarding it is. So whatever your why is, if you don't know it now, it's fine, but you've got to determine it because that's going to be your rocket fuel to get you to, through 2020. The next thing you got to do, all right, the next thing you got to do is you got to set goals. Goals are everything. What do I want to accomplish? I got my why. I, I, know, how I'm, I, know, I know what's going to get me through. I got the fuel to make this happen. So now what am I trying to accomplish? Without a goal for the year, it's like getting in your car to go somewhere and you don't know where you're going, right? I'm just going to get in my car. I'm just going to drive. Where are you going? You're wasting time. You're wasting fuel. You're wasting money. You're, 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 this is, it, 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 it doesn't make sense. You have to set a goal. Now, the, I like to do goals in three parts, all right? So you can all see me on the webcam, I hope. And those of you on Facebook, you can see me as well. All right. And remember, don't forget, the first person to buy a ticket gets the rapid results. All right. $200 off. Call in. Get that rapid results. A $1,000 kit with the ticket. And you save $200. It's a steal. So get that. Be the first person to do that. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. So you want to set a three-part goal. You want to do a... A must-do goal, a should-do goal, and a could-do goal. A must-do goal, a should-do goal, and a could-do goal. My must-do goal 
is the same as I did in 2019. Why is that my must-do goal? Because I'm not going to focus on that, all right? The same as 2019, that's my must-do goal. Why? Because I know I can already do it. That's why. So it's not an exciting goal, but as I had mentioned before, we don't know the future. So as best as we plan the future, what, the, what, what planning for the future does when it comes to our business is luck favors the prepared. You put yourself in a position to get all of the luck because it takes a lot of luck in business too, but it puts you in the best position to get the lucky balances so you can capitalize and grow. But what if intangibles happen? What if, and I'm not saying this for him, I'm not wishing ill well, I'm just saying these are the things that I've seen my clients experience. These are things that I've experienced over the years myself. What if you and your spouse get a divorce? What if there's a significant death to somebody that you love in your family, like a parent or a child, right? a child? What if you or your business partner passes away, right? These are these, these crazy things. And it sounds, I'm not trying to be gloom and doom. I'm being real right? I'm being real. These are things that I have seen business owners over the last eight years of serving all of you deal with, and these things come up and you don't know. What if, what if I become disabled? What if somebody gets cancer? What if, what if uh, my, 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 my most important key employee walks off the job and I can't replace this person, and, and, and then what, right? That's why you set a must-do goal, so that in the event of the unthinkable, and, and I'm going to be real, I'm going to say pretty much once every five years, something like I just mentioned happens, right? That's just the luck of the draw. And so if it happens to be your time for something catastrophic, you can still survive and get through with your must-do goal because you know you can get through, you know with what you have, you can make it happen, and so on and so forth. So we're not excited about the must-do goal. All right, I don't want you to be excited about it, but you have to have a must do goal. The second one is your should do goal. All right, your should do goal is based on industry average, the standard rate of growth in our industry is about 7 to 8%. 7 to 8% is the average industry rate of growth. So what did I do this year? Next year I should do 7 to 8% more than that. So I'm going to tell you, this is also not a very exciting goal. It's better than the must do goal. And it lets me know that, well, you know, if I keep going at it and I'm trucking along and I don't make many changes, but I keep doing what I'm doing, I should grow the business by about seven to eight percent. So if I did a million dollars in 2019, I should be able to do a million one. A million and seventy-five thousand dollars, right? Something like that. So that's your should-do goal. And then the exciting one, the fun one. If everything goes according to plan, and I have nothing catastrophic, and I'm motivated, and I remember my why, I motivate my team. I get a couple lucky bounces with some new referral sources that I didn't have in 2019, and they take to me. And I'm gonna. I'm going to lay it out for you, what you have to do to get that, all right? If everything goes well, I could do this, right? And that could be a dollar amount. That could be your census growth, right? Census, whoops. That could be uh, time, right? I grow my business to a point where I could uh, – this is one of my favorite ones. Listen, listen to this goal, folks, right? I grow my business to a point where I can financially afford to hire an executive director to run my company so that I have more time to do the things that I love. Who likes the sound of that? Right? I still own the company. I'm not making as much money as I did when I was running it. I hand the reins over to somebody else to run it for me, but I work now 20 hours a week. And I'm still making six figures and I still own a company and it's growing and it's thriving and everything else. I do a revenue share 
with the executive director. These are all things that we go over with our clients. But th- how, who, who likes that? Raise your hand. Raise your hand on, on the, uh, the webinar here. You can raise your hand by clicking it. Who likes that? Oh, look at all those hands going up. I love when that happens. That means we're interacting, folks. I love you. I love you. Right? So, so that, 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 that's a could, that, that's a could do goal. That, that could very well happen. You know, one of my mastermind clients, I was speaking to her this morning and, and she was like, Steve, you know, I'm a little bit frustrated. I don't, I feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again and I'm not going to get the results that I want. And, and the results are, right? Get this. The results are she did $3 million in revenue this year. All right. And I was like, wait a second, so and so, won't say her name. Uh, last year, you did just over $2 million and you did $3 million this year. You grew that. Now, our plan for next year is let's hire somebody top, heavy end salary wise to take some of the burden and work a little off of you because now that you can afford it, this is going to give you your time back. You worked hard. Now next year you get to play hard. That's that's a cool could-do goal. That's one of my clients who hit the could-do goal. All right? And then she was like, oh, I didn't think about it that way. You're, you're right. I am working hard or whatever. I was like, yeah, now, now we can afford to do this, right? That was the plan at the beginning of the year. Now this year we get to start executing it. So th- these goals, again, they could be money. They could be census. They could be time. They could be something personal. All right. So it doesn't have to be just about the almighty dollar. All right. It could be something else, but this is what you're working towards. This is the purpose of why you're putting forth the effort and the energy. So you have your why. Why is my fuel? What am I trying to, where am I going? I'm going to this future. Now, how do I get there? All right. And that's the next one. Whoops. Oh, yeah, you get there by coming to the boot camp, right? <laughs> Call in, right? You can get your ticket, first person, get the rapid results kit, all right? Just throw that back out there. All right, next thing you're going to do, up. Oh, did somebody buy it already? All right, so it's gone, but call in, and I'll tell you what, you call, anybody else calls in, if you get in live on the webinar, I'll give it to you, all right? You hear that, folks? You get in live on the webinar while this webinar, before I discontinue, before I click end, you call in, I'll give this to you, but you got to get the ticket now, all right, because I'm serious. This is, this is an exploding offer. You're on live. That's my thank you to you for doing that, and thank that person. You're coming to the boot camp. Make sure you come give me a hug and say I was number one, all right, I want to, when I see you in March. All right, so continue. Make a plan. Let me show you a marketing plan. These are marketing plans that we go over and give to our clients when they work with us, all right? These are marketing plans that I used to do, marketing plans that talk about things like my field marketing. Field marketing is the number one way to generate referrals, by the way. You want to grow your business, you want to grow it strong, you got to do field marketing. So how are you going to do it, all right? There's the first part of your plan. Networking events. I don't know if you realize this or not, Home Care Pulse, they are the, uh, they do the benchmark study, all the latest data and all the touch points that exist out there. And with that data, with all those touch points out there, they have determined for the first time ever, I'm gonna go ahead and pat myself on the back and all of my team here at Hurricane Marketing Enterprises, Pat, Nick, Pat, Jen, Pat, coaches, Pat, everybody on the back. For the first time in the history of Home Care Pulse, 10 years, networking was one of the top 10 best referral sources for business. So, you, so what are you doing to get a piece of that type of growth? Advertising is another part of your marketing plan. Where am I going to spend dollars to get return on investment from traditional advertising methods? And there's a bunch of them. And again, this is I go over this in greater detail. I want to keep us on time. I go over this in greater detail with our clients. Uh, promotional items. You got to have promo items to give away, tchotchkes, and how do you use those with your marketing effort to generate revenue? Contracts, like the VA. You saw my partner, Veteran Care Coordination. They're one of the sponsors of the boot camp coming up. They are a great contract of a payer source. You're going to hear more from them on the next part two of making 2020 your best year yet. Calendar timetable. How long is it going to take me to accomplish this? Break it out by quarter 
And then the future, what is the goal going to look like and what's going to happen when I accomplish it? That's one marketing plan. For those of you that have other ones, all right, uh, you have technology, you have resources, you can actually take a look at your referral sources. This was my marketing plan that I created for my company, CareChoice. All right, you see that right there, folks? CareChoice, all right? CareChoice. That was my marketing plan that I created for CareChoice back in 2011 when I already had a $5 million a year private pay home care company. I looked through my referral sources, what I can do to get each one of them going better. I went a little bit further into it where I took a look at what accounts I'm identifying as uh, on the rise and some accounts that were underproducing in the year before that I wanted to focus my effort on in the new year. So again, and so, and, and what I love about this, and I'm show, showing you this, right? And it's funny when I, when I look back and I look at all the different strategies, my lunch and learns, my senior connections, my society on aging, volunteering, the calendars, I did the coupons and so on and so forth. Knowing the revenue that we generated in that year, it never would have happened if I didn't make a plan. So the reason why I'm sharing these with you so that you can at least get like a gist of it. And again, if you're a client watching this, just ask your coach. They can send it to you. They have those. You, you, know, you're, you paid for working with us. We want to give you everything. You already have that if you're one of our clients. But I'm not going to tell you to do something that I didn't do myself. The reason why our company, my company, Hurricane Marketing Enterprises, is so successful is because I've walked in your shoes. I used to do this. I had my own company that was a home care business. I speak your language. I know the frustration and I know the joys that come from having this business. You make a plan. You ever hear the saying, plan your work, work your plan? This is where you make your plan. Those are the things that should be in your plan, which are going to help you to achieve your goal. Speaking on the goals here, your should do goal and could do goal, if you're doing it right and you're focusing 2020 on your could do goal, you should crush the must-do goal, and you should exceed the should, and you should fall in between here. All right? The could-do goal should be like a perfect scenario that you don't hit. If you hit it, great. Then if you, hit, if you know you're going to hit it earlier on in the year, you can adjust it and make it a little bit larger or a greater goal. But again, you're, you're going to fall somewhere between should-do and could-do, and that's growth. That's beyond what you should do. This is why my clients average a 36% revenue growth over what they did the year before, which is five times the industry average. The next one, now that you have your plan, how much am I going to spend? What is this going to cost me? All right, so let me go ahead and write this down or whatever, uh, erase it rather. Mm, do, 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 do. Commercial time, come to the boot camp, March 18th, 19th, and 20th. Houston, Texas. It's going to be amazing. We're going to give you everything you need to blow away the competition. Can you see that? Right? You see that? That's perfect, right? All right. The commercial is over now. So we continue. I hope you're having fun. Like, I'm having so much fun. I, I have maybe three hours of sleep. I was up all night doing a bunch of stuff and work. I get, I get some of my best work done at night when I have insomnia. And uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm delirious, but I love you all. Mwah, mwah. I love you all. Thank you for being on this webinar with me. All right. So the small business administration, back to business, right? The SBA, those great folks of our government, they recommend that you spend, ironically, 7 to 8% of your total revenue on all things sales and marketing to generate the revenue that you want to do. So if I want to do one million dollars, right? Like Dr. Evil from Austin Powell. One million dollars. Right? If I want to do a million dollars, I gotta spend seventy to eighty thousand dollars on all things sales and marketing. That's how that works out. But you gotta spend this first to get that return, right? You understand how that works? So it's you don't get the million dollars unless you spend the money. So, you, you know, it takes money to make money. So I have my marketing plan. Now, each of the strategies, each of the things that I'm doing, how much are those going to cost me? And that's what I got to be able to figure out. Now, this I feel is a little bit higher because our industry is very referral driven. And so I recommend you spend 5% of the revenue that you're trying to obtain. So think about it. 
I want to do five million dollars. That means that five percent of five million dollars is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. If I spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, you should be able to generate five million dollars in revenue. Marketing rep salary can, can be included in there, all of your advertising, your lunch and learns, all the things that are your part of your strategies of your marketing plan. But what the marketing plan does is tell you how you're going to do it. Your budget tells you how much it's going to cost, and then you break it down month to month so you can afford it. You're not going to spend, I'm not going to spend, in this case, the one million, I'm not going to spend seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 in a day. I'm going to spend it over the course of 12 months. So what does that look like? <sighs> $6,000 a month, $6,500 a month, that's affordable. What is that $6,500 a month going to go towards? And that's back to your plan. All right, so strategic partners. This is where we're going to get into the PDGM, all right? You've heard me talk about this from the beginning, and you've heard me, for those of you who have known since 2012 when I first came on the scene, I spoke about power partners. Power partners. That's a strategic partnership. Power partners. We work at Hurricane Market Enterprises with home health, hospice, and private duty. This is the three legged bar stool. I don't like that marker. This one, okay? The three legged bar stool of home based services. Okay, leg one, home health. This is your skilled agency. These are the Medicare folks who are, they're scared right now. All right, anybody on here who's home health, I know that you're concerned about the PDGMs for next year. This whole patient-driven grouping model. And, and, and the way I see it, honestly, folks, from me to you, I think it's just a government scam to get out of paying people. That's what I think it is. I think that people are going to suffer for it. And I know that businesses, home health and hospice companies, hospice, right, they're going to suffer for it. They're, they're about 10 to 20% will go out of business in the next year or two years. That's, that's what's coming. All right, so so the private duty folks, take note of this. Why do you have to know this? Because everything that happens to Medicare has a delayed trickle effect to the private industry. I've been in this industry for 15 years now, when I had my company and now helping you, all right, with Hurricane Marketing Enterprises, when I had my own home care company and... Every time something happened in Medicare, there was a delayed response on how it affected us. So what we have to do is we have to work together now as a unit. As in, I want you to write this down, folks, an interdisciplinary team. You have to start becoming partners with one another. It doesn't have to be contracted partners. But through collaborative efforts, through the interdisciplinary team approach to providing care for patients, that's how we all are going to thrive in the changes that are coming. I'm going to share something with you. This is, this is if you don't subscribe to Home Health Care News, you've got to find the website and subscribe to Home Health Care News. This is an article that came out just last week. And it says false alarm. And the reason why the false alarm was there is because all year long, everything in Medicare was about this whole PDGM and what changes were coming. And there were summits and there were conferences and everything where everyone was talking about and worried about it because there were early models indicating that like 30% of the home health and hospice companies around the country are going to go out of business because of the way this changes. And then in October, 
the skilled nursing facilities, because they're the first ones that have been affected by it, and they're trying to be proactive, they laid off on average 5% of all of the therapists that work in their community because the, the, the reason for this, just so everybody knows, right, like why is the government changing the way that they reimburse here? 10% of the businesses out there are fraudulent in what they do, like 10%. So there are 10% of people out there, business owners and companies that exist, that are overbilling Medicare and Medicaid for the therapy that they're providing. So as a result, the government is now going to make sure that they're not over providing care for somebody. And this is why I say that people are going to get hurt because of it. This is not a good thing. All right. So they're going to cut back how much they're going to reimburse, and now they're only going to reimburse in certain scenarios and certain amount of therapy. And so as a result, 5% of all the therapists at the skilled nursing facility level at the largest companies like Genesis Healthcare and other huge companies out there, and it's all recorded in there, 5% of their therapists, they've all let go. And, and, it, and this is going to be the same thing in the home health because they're cutting back how much therapy they're providing because people were fraudulent in it. And so those 10% that were bad guys, I hope they go out of business. But unfortunately, the 90% who are good are going to be affected by it. And so as a result, because they're going to now have to, have to it's a change in how quickly you have to turn around the patients and you have to submit your billing and you have to get it corrected fast and all the other things. And the opportunity, though, and that's what this article points out here. So, again, homehealthcarenews.com. You can check it out and sign up for the newsletter and read all these articles I'm showing. But this one in particular points to how to thrive in this new PDGM, right? Because everything references back to the, the late 19. 90s and early 2000s when Medicare last changed and what happened. That's why the fear is there because it's like, oh no, 20 years ago they changed how we got paid and all these companies filed for bankruptcy. Is it going to happen again? That's the fear. And, and they're with, it, it warrants the attention. But here's what you got to do, all right? Here's the positive of it, all right? And this is, I'm going to tell you, this is why you got to come to the boot camp, all right? The key to survival. Do not take my word for it, right? If this is the first time you're hearing me, don't take my word for it. Even if it's, even if you heard me before, don't take my word for it, right? Take the word of the leaders of our industry. I'm a leader of the industry, but other people too. This is straight from this article I just showed you, right? Look at where it says. It says keys to survival. How do you survive the carnage? Go down to the third paragraph. The small provider that is nimble, that has specialty programs and that can pivot quickly is going to survive. And Dordrick is the president of the Home Care Association, the National Association of Home Care and Hospice. That's that's the NAC conference. The president said that the companies that are going to thrive are the ones that are nimble, who can make changes on the fly and embrace the change quickly and have specialized programs. Now, I'm going to drive that home because if you look at the last line here, about 69, 70% of the home health companies in the United States have a specialty program, something like heart failure, congestive heart failure, I'm sorry, heart failure, COPD, dementia, and other conditions. But less than 4% are planning on launching more in the next two years. There's your opportunity, folks. You gotta specialize. Now I have been saying specialty. My company, Care Choice, back in the day, I'm gonna show you something, all right? You can still hear me, but for those of you who are following me, I'm getting my sales presentation binder from back when I used to sell home care one on one in two thousand and eleven. You see it on the screen, right, on the on the webcam and the Facebook Live feed, and this was my binder. This is this, how to make one of these binders, by the way, is in the rapid results kit. So whoever got that, you you know, you, you can call and get one of these, all right? If you get your ticket, how to do one of these binders. Is it another one? Wow, look at that. You guys are buying them. That's good. You're smart. You're getting all this stuff. It's all in the binder. It's in that kit right here. Where am I? These are specialty programs that I created almost a decade ago. Fall prevention, orthopedic. There's dementia programs and everything else. and if you want to thrive 
as a home health or a hospice, you're going to have to create specialty programs. If you want to thrive as a private duty, you are going to have to create specialty programs that allow you to work with your home health and hospice counterparts to support each other in a strategic partnership known as a power partner. That's what we do here. And that is the primary focus. It is the primary focus of the boot camp. How to create specialty programs, how to work with this to not only keep us in business, but my partners who are referring me and together, rising tides lift all boats. Because if, if, if my home health counterparts and hostages, the people who are referred, if they go out of business, I go out of business, right? If, there's, if they're not getting paid and they're hurting, I'm not going to be able to work with them. And then, then, then it, it, we all fail, fail. From the home health and hospice standpoint, if I want to specialize, well, I better make sure I can take care of the patients that I'm taking on. Because if I don't, I'm going to sink. This is where I got to make sure I have a strong relationship with a private duty company that understands what we do with our specialty program and working together. And that's, that's the entire event. That's the entire event. It's, I, I, I did not learn about the opportunity here because this article only came out last week when I first started creating this, when I created this boot camp. But it's ironic that the things that I've been training people on with the updates over time are more important now than they've ever been. And so that's the last part, which I had said before, you got to get trained. You have to know how to, you have to know how to make this relate, this relationship right here, the interdisciplinary team approach for the home-based providers, you have got to know how to make this relationship work so that all parts, whatever one you're from, and then the other two counterparts are thriving. It's the Medicare is changing. All right. Everybody with the Medicare advantage, don't, don't. If, you're, if you're private, stay as private as possible. Right, you don't want to go through with the home health and relying on the government. While it sounds like oh, it's a definite payer source, this and that. Look at the headaches that they're going through if you're private duty. All right, now from the home health and hospice side, and this is something else, private duty, right? For those out there getting trained, if I'm a home health company and I'm worried about how I'm going to get paid, you know what the easiest thing for me to do would be? Add my own private duty. Then I don't need to work with the private duty because I do it in house. And I have a lot of people who call me who are in this boat, and we help them add a private duty too. So get the training. How do you set yourself up for success, not just in 2020, but really for the entire decade? You've got to know how to navigate the Medicare system. And the, the, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know any other national event that's going to allow you to get that training. And it's home health, hospice, and private duty all in one place. So this isn't just a separate event. There'll be breakouts and things for each individual, and then there'll be group sessions. And this working together is one of the big group sections. So imagine I'm a home health provider, and I'm at the event, and I bring my private duty, and I bring my hospice power partners with me, and we go together, and we learn how to strategically partner together and work better together to thrive in 2020. Do you know how much of an advantage I'm going to have competitively over all of my competitors? You can't even measure it. So while people will be closing their doors, literally, that's, that's what's coming. While people will be closing their doors, you will be thriving. And I mean thriving. Because when, this, when the people who are getting affected negatively can't handle it, they're going to be looking to go to people who can. The people who are ready to handle are the ones that are going to get all the overflow, and they're going to be explosive. And for the private duty folks, if you are in tight with the people that are embracing and you're helping them embrace for it, you are going to also get all of the overflow. Home health, hospice, private duty, the three-legged bar stool of home-based providers. I've been saying this for eight years. And finally, now, with Medicare making the changes that they are, it is more important that you know how to navigate this 
and you know how to get through it than ever before. So again, at the boot camp, all right, because we're going to wrap up here, and I'll take your questions, all right? I think, Nick, we probably have some questions, I would imagine, on Facebook. I think I see questions that are on the uh, the uh, webinar here, and then we'll go into it. But, you know, at this boot camp, you're also going to hear from my CNA jobs, and they're going to be talking about recruitment and retention, how to get more caregivers to fill the demand and the need and to be able to run the business smarter. You're going to hear from veterans home care, and they're going to talk about how you can get more payer sources to help you overcome all the things that you have to do to be able to grow your business. It, 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 it's, it's beyond, you know, comprehension at this point. This is what you need to do. This is where you need to be. This is what you got to do. Sign up and be there. So I'm going to take your questions now. All right. So let's see what we have over here. All right. And so and if you have any questions on anything, please feel free to ask me here. Ah, oh, you are so great, Leanne. Um, you're welcome. So Leanne writes, folks here. You know, Steve, thank you for all that you're doing. I'm planning on opening my non-medical private duty home care business in Massachusetts, and my main goal is to understand health insurance and other benefits to be offered to employees. How do I go about this when I crunch the numbers offering health insurance and benefits that almost wipe out my profits? So Leanne, that's a very good question. A lot of people are concerned about it. What I'm going to tell you, Leanne, is don't worry about it yet. If you haven't opened your doors yet, don't worry about it yet. Get the business going. Get revenue coming in. When you look at the – something I did as part of the uh, the uh, Caregiver Recruitment and Retention Summit, I put an entire program together. Next year, I'm actually going to be rolling out an entire retention focus and recruitment training program for you and for all of your office staff. That's one of the things that I'm working on for 2020 to be able to further support all of you, my, 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 my home-based providers. But one of the things that I found very interesting from the Home Care Pulse data and the Home Care Pulse report was that you do not have to worry about benefits because caregivers don't worry about benefits at all. It makes almost no difference in retention or recruiting, if you offer benefits or not, the difference was negligible. So I want you to offer benefits. It's good to offer benefits, but it's more important for you to get the business going, get it growing, get it thriving, you know, get it to the seven figure mark so that you're doing over a million dollars in revenue and then start looking into those plans. Don't worry about it until then. But that's a very, very good question. All right. Uh, Nick, are there questions on Facebook? No questions on Facebook? Wow. Okay, Facebook. That's fine. Let me take another question over here on the webinar with me live. Uh, I'm having a hard time hearing the training. Ah, Dina missed out on that. Well, I'm sorry, Dina. All right. Can't see. All right. That's a technical one. I signed on late. How do I get a rapid results kit? So Robin's asking about the rap. How do I get this? You got to call like now. The number's right here. If you buy a ticket to the boot camp, we're giving out one of these, but it's got to be live on here. So if you haven't done so already, call in and get it because we're going to wrap up real soon here for those of you who are still on here. All right, so the wrap results kit, what's in here, someone asked me. It's the $3 million blueprint, how to scale and grow your business, how long is it going to take, how much money do I have to spend, what referral sources, how many referrals from each one. This right here is $500 sold individually. On here is the uh, thumb drive where you get the art of closing, how to close patients. This is good for hospice as well as private duty. And then the power partners, how to make this whole interdisciplinary team approach to care work. That's in here. That sales binder that I showed you, that is in here and how to model it and create your own sales binder. Also in here are sample schedules. How much time should I spend? on my marketing effort, what are the things that I have to do every single week with my marketing effort if I'm the owner, if I have a full-time marketing rep, if I have a part-time marketing rep or a dual role person, this is what the owner schedule should look like, this is what the dual, mark, dual marketing rep schedule should look like, somebody with two different jobs in your organization, part-time personal blank schedule, that's in here. You get a complimentary strategy session with one of our coaches to talk about anything that you want or anything that you're facing or anything that you're going through in your business. So you get a coaching session with it. 
And then obviously, because you get the boot camp ticket, you get to come to the boot camp. So it's like, I think when I added it all up, it's over $2,000 worth of stuff for the price of the boot camp if you buy it right now before I go off of this. All right. That's, that's my, my special that we did. We've already sold several of them. I've been hearing them ringing the bell and the phones are ringing here. Call in, get that, that, that special. It's $200 off the full price of the ticket. And you get that as my thank you for doing this live with me here. All right. Very good question. Thank you so much. Um, Tuane is asking, uh, oh, thank you. You're very, very welcome. Don't, don't worry. I'm so glad that you're here. Michael, don't worry about missing it. It's okay. It's being recorded. We can send the recording to you, but Michael, you're one of our clients. You're working with David. I am super proud of you because this right here with where your agency is, you kind of fall into this umbrella as well. You're ready for the next year. You're, you're working with David. He's navigating you through it. And, and, and look out, Texas. Michael is on the prowl, Rawr, right? Just like a lion, right? Just going to go out there and attack it and make it happen. I believe in you, brother. I love you, man. Keep making it happen. Uh, Jamie is asking, aside from orthopedics and dementia, can you list additional specialty programs to consider? Jamie, that's a fantastic question. That is a fantastic question, all right? Uh, congestive heart failure is one that you can definitely specialize in. Uh, we said orthopedic, we said dementia, COPD and other pulmonary lung disorders. I would go with diabetes as another one. And then one that a lot of people avoid, but from the private duty standpoint, it takes a lot of work. And at the boot camp, I'm going to go over how to do it. Jerry Syke. Jerry Syke, Jerry Syke. From a private duty standpoint, a Jerry Syke program for somebody who really masters it, you could have 10, 12 clients and they generate a million dollars in revenue a year. Because for the, the family of somebody who has psycho, psychological issues, and, and, and they, they physically, the only option, if they have resources and the family has the resources and the patient has resources, the only option other than you know asylums and institutions is a, a home care company that has a strong Jerry Psych program. Now you got to partner up with with uh, GCMs, and you got to have some nursing care coordination. It's, it's very encompassing. But for your area, you know, again, you could have 10, 12 clients, and that generates seven figures because they're getting a lot of care for the person who has the resources, and they don't want their loved one to go into one of those institutions. That's a great program to specialize in. All right, so we talked about a bunch of them, orthopedic, dementia, Jerry Psych, diabetes, uh, COPD, CHF, congestive heart failure. All right, there's, there's six right there. Another one that I absolutely love, and again, I'm going to go over all of these at the boot camp. Like, how do you make them? What should they look like? Strokes. Stroke is the number one cause of long-term disability. If I'm a home health company, who do I think is going to end up being readmitted to the hospital? It's probably a stroke patient. So I got to make sure they get extra care, they're working together. All of this is going to be part of the boot camp. Very good question, Jamie. Uh, the next one. Hi, Steve. Hey, Terrain. Thank you for this webinar. You did a great job. You're very welcome. Steve is asking me uh, the value of spending time to secure Medicare Advantage when so many of the initial contracts are with home health companies who have or add a home care component. I'm only private duty. Steve, don't worry about it. That's what, my, what I'm saying to you here. The whole PDGM model is going to completely change the way billing is done. People will be going out of business from it. I'm not trying to, I'm not gloom and doom here. I'm just, I'm just, just being real. This is, this is where I'm, I, I don't like people to rely on the government when it comes to getting payer sources. Now, the government, there's, there are companies like Ameticis and Encompass. They're going to be fine because they're taking care of hundreds of thousands of patients at home. So the government is making sure that those companies will be okay and they're going to be fine. But it's, it's the local ones, the mom and pops. They're the ones that are, I don't know if they're going to be able to weather the storm or not without additional training, without additional support to be able to learn how to embrace this change. And that's, that's where it's coming from. So Steve, your private duty, that's fine. Don't worry about going after the Medicare Advantage because the government, when they say they're going to change how they pay for something, you 
you went through all this work and now they're going to change the way they're going to pay you on it, right? I don't I don't see it being worth it. You you have more control over your business when it's private pay. You can scale, you can grow, you can do a lot of different things with it. If you need help, come to the boot camp, right? Get the training for it so that you can be able to thrive in the changes to come. And and and, and I want there to be a positive theme on this, all right? Yeah, the PDGM is here. Yeah, it's a scary time because Medicare's not sure how they're going to get paid. What kind of uh cyclical effect is that going to have in the private industry and so on? Don't worry about the fear. Look at the positives. Embrace the change. Again, get the training to know how to thrive in the 20s, the roaring 20s, so that you can do that, all right? Because when you do that, I'm telling you, opportunity is there. You know what the other opportunity is? The largest demographic of the United States, the baby boomers. They represent the largest demographic of the United States. During this decade, they're going to start needing home care. My mother's a baby boomer. She already has a home health aid. She needs home care. So there's your opportunity. Learn how to play the game in the new decade. I almost said millennium, right? We're, we're, in the, we're not going that far ahead, Steve, right? Learn how to play the game in the new decade and thrive. That's what this whole webinar is about, all right? Very good question, Steve. Uh, next question, and I want to make sure I end on time, so we've got four minutes left on this special promotion here. All right, and then afterwards, you can always enter the discount code that you see on the screen right there, HME. You can buy it online. The discount code is HME200, all capitals. When you enter that promo code, it'll save you $200 off a full-price ticket. All right, so when the webinar ends, you can always go back and still do that, all right? Uh, what is the best effective form of marketing? Direct referral marketing. Year after year, home care polls, 10 years straight, strengthening relationships with referral sources has always been the best opportunity for growth. That is the best form of marketing and advertising, getting out there, making relationships. Why? Because if I advertise on TV, if I advertise on the radio, if I advertise in senior service guides, if I advertise on billboards, if I advertise with direct mailers, all of the traditional advertising ways, you don't know, like you may know you can target seniors, but you don't know which seniors actually need you now. But when you do direct referral marketing, and you're working with the three-legged bar stool and other resources that exist out there, skilled nursing facilities, assisted living, independent, hospitals, and so on. You're getting people who need you now, and they're ready to make the, the, the commitment. And so you convert significantly more with direct referral marketing than you would. You, you'd have to get 10 internet leads to one or two direct referrals to be able to make the same conversion. That's the best use of your time. Very good question, Esther. And that's, that's all we go through at the boot camp, by the way. Um, Zed? You're very welcome, my friend. Thank you for joining. All right, Jamie, awesome response, Steve. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, sister. God bless. All right, and then uh, we have heard the MA contracts will be through the insurance companies direct at Medicare Advantage. Do you feel this is a lot of revenue potential with Medicare Advantage? Um, Tina, I don't know. Maybe you heard my answer to the other question that Steve asked. Uh, I want you to reflect on this saying, right? The second mouse gets the cheese. The second mouse gets the cheese. What does that mean? Well, think about a mouse trap, right? There's cheese and there's a trap. The first mouse that goes over to it whoosh, is dead. The second mouse that comes walking over, they're the one that gets the cheese. So with the Medicare Advantage in your area, I would not recommend being the first person for it because there's going to be a there's, there's there's a lot of pitfalls. We don't we don't know. Medicare is changing the way that they're doing the billing for the other folks. How do we know that's not going to happen to them? I in in this case here, I would rather not be an early adopter because whenever you're waiting for because think about it this way, Tina and everybody else out there. This is this is just my opinion. You don't have to agree with me. I'm sure there's people out there who he doesn't know what he's talking about. I had a five million dollar home care company a decade ago. I, I've literally helped people grow their businesses by a billion dollars, but I don't know what I'm talking about, all right? 
hear me on this. If you're relying on the government for pay, that means you're floating salaries of caregivers until you get paid. The government says they're not paying you. That's it. Good luck getting that money. That's why I don't. That's why I say reflect and meditate on the second mouse gets the cheese. All right. Let the bigger companies, let those folks embrace it. It's fine. Once the kinks are worked out, then maybe, maybe next year I'll change my tone on it. But for now, if you're a private duty, stay private duty. If you're home health hospice, create those programs. Learn how to adjust with all of the, you know, you got to get your payment, and all your documents and stuff together and submit it within 30 days. They're not going to pay anything outside of that. So get moving. Get on that. Embrace that change. Be quick. Specialize. Work together as your interdisciplinary team approach, and you'll also thrive with the changes with the PDGM. All right? I love you all very, very much. Uh, oh, one last question just came in, Steve. Would you do private duty only if you add home health to private duty? Uh, I This model does work. All right? I, have, I have a lot of clients that are home health and private duty together, and they were one or the other, and then they added their uh, the counterpart. So they were home health, and they added private duty. Or they were private duty, and they added home health. They can work together. You can do this. But the one caution I'll give you, and then I'm going to let go because we're over time here, and I want to let everybody get going with what they have to do and stuff. If you decide to go that route, you must run them as separate but equal companies. The companies that try to run it under one house with the same staff, what happens is whatever you started out as, that's the comfort zone of your team and your staff, and the other one will go to the wayside. So if I'm private duty, and I've been private duty for you know five years, and I want to add home health. We'll add it with the same team, and they're gonna every time somebody needs this, they're not gonna do it right because they're gonna stay to what they know, and vice versa. So if you have your home health company and you want to add private duty, you have gotta run it separately, even though it's the same company, separate division, but get separate staff, separate everybody else to add to it, so that this way the home health folks focus on that, the private folks focus on that, and then you refer back and forth. Maybe there's one head person, you, Steve who are the go-between back and forth, and you keep it going and make it happen. It's the best advice I can give you in a short time, all right? Uh, let's see. So, all right. I love you all very much. Um, if I add home health, would you not do Medicare accreditation, just private duty with the home health? Yeah, I wouldn't go that route. I'm just, that's just my, I'm trying to get you out of the Medicare space. And if you're, if you are in a Medicare space, I'm trying to teach you how to thrive in the changes that are come. That's the whole purpose of the boot camp. That's what this is about. I'll see you all next year. You're very welcome, Steve. Um, I love you all. All right. So again, you know, God bless. Merry Christmas. Happy uh, Hanukkah. Happy holidays. Let's have a prosperous new year, 2020 and beyond. Thank you, my friends on GoToWebinar. Thank you, my friends on Facebook. Mwah, mwah, mwah. God bless. Good night from Hurricane Marking Enterprises. See you in 2020 at the boot camp.